When it's time to design in CAT systems some wing fuselage elevator rotors, it takes a lot of time to learn using Fusion 360. It's a very uh, steep learning curve. In this video, I will show you how to speed up all of this five times faster, five times faster in the learning curve, five times faster probably to design new parts. And you know what? The best way to do this is to not use Fusion 360. We will still need Fusion 360. But why? Because simply Fusion 360 is like a Swiss knife. It can do a lot of stuff. It can do some wings, of course, but is not intended to do such a thing. And I, th I think especially about sophisticated design, multi-profile with twist, and you want to have some control on the trailing edge. And the problem also is that in Fusion 360, the golden rule is normally that you should constrain every sketch. When you do such a thing, you cannot move anything. And especially when you have come from the sheets to the solid, and when you have a solid, you cannot really come back. It's quite difficult, even if you use the history line. But now the best is that you make your own opinion about this. And I will make a demo for you right now in this video. So what we want is to put in the CAD Fusion 360, this wing. This is a Synergy F3G, F5G wing of almost 4 meters, including 8 profile. And we have also some twist here. So if you are familiar with x 5 this is x 5 and we are translating this in this software open vsp it's free it comes from the nasa so when you are creating a wing in open vsp first you need to go to the plan tab and to write the total span of your wing which is almost four meters here so it's 10 seconds then you have to create the necessary number of sections section is what happens between two profiles you create by inserting the number of sections you need so it's probably one minute and now in each section you have to put the length of the section here span and you have to put the first code of the section and the second code when you are going to the next section the previous code of the previous section is already written so you have just to put the next one and you go forward like this it's probably three minutes of work and after you go to the airfoil tab and you just read your file and you download your profile so you're gonna have to do this for each profile you need just click download change of section download the new profile for the new section and you are done so here really in one minute it's done using still the section tab you want to have the real geometry with the necessary sweep and you go in each section and it's very simple the sweep location is exactly the inch of your aileron of your flap and we know that in this wing, the aerodynamical inch is 30%. So you put this numeral on each section. Just need 30 seconds. Because you are in the wing section, you gonna have to put the twist now. And the twist is likely to be linked with the inch. And you have to put the necessary value accordingly to your drawing so we can see here that the twist is changing it's likely that you need one minute or two minutes to do all of this and the sweep and the twist and that's done now we go to the first tab the general tab because we want the density of information to be higher and so this is named the tessellation and this, in this tab you have only two values to change the new u and new w 
and in average it's 80 and 360, something like this. You just type two values and so you need only 10 seconds to do this. And after you need to go in each section and to improve the new U for each section, depend on the length of your section and the code and what you want. So I put an average 50, 55 and it takes, let's say, 30 seconds. So now by using the last tab, modify and going in each airfoil section, because the tab is related to each airfoil, you can have some control on the trailing gauge. And for example, you can give the eight for the trailing gauge, exact age you want, let's say 0.4 millimeters. And you have seen that the trailing gauge has moved to be a little uh, less higher. And so you have control on each section. So you can use the absolute. So you want, let's say, 10 of an inch. And you can do this all along the, the code. I recommend in the curvy sections to use a relative value to have a real linear height of the trailing edge all along the, the end of the profile. So you need probably two minutes or one minute to figure out the, the age you want. I recommend really to put some value and not zero. And the obvious reason is that it will help you amazingly when you will have to work in the CAT system because this trailing gauge will give you the separation between the upper profile and the lower profile, extra low and throttle. And you need these, these lines in for future work and especially if you are making some molds. It's time to join the different section to blend them. So for this, you will uh, use the blending tab. And to be honest, that is the most difficult and probably here you will spend most of your time. You can spend, let's say, 5, 10 or 20 minutes here. And the rule generally, as you can see, is that I'm asking the old board uh, blending to be like the inboard previous section and so on and so on and so on until I go to the tip and now we can see on the last section that I start to have some control on the strength and we can see that things are changing drastically uh, for the last portion so if I put two here you can see the consequences so I've been really too far. It can take a little time. Uh, so now I want to put some D-Dollar to the wings. And uh, I will simply in the first section put the value, the D-Dollar. The D-Dollar is so six. And because in the plan menu I have asked the D-Dollar to be relative, it means that it will be 6% for the whole wing. Because if I ask absolute, what happened is 6% apply only for the first section, and I will have to put 6 on each section. So it's really faster to put 6% of the dual to the first section, go to the plane menu, and ask the dual to be relative. So it's probably 30 seconds to put this value. So last tips, you can uh, see that I have a gap between the two wings. So this 40 millimeters, let's say that it is the exact width of my fuselage. So in the CAD later, uh, the wings will be nicely uh, located, positioned. And also a tip is that uh, I have now the deer dwell on the wood profile. So I will have no work to do in the CAD system because my uh, wings are already cut to the right deer dwell on the wood code. And additionally, I can have uh, more control 
by rotating the section to match the dildo. So the profile stayed lignant. So now we have, uh, before the export, the last step, which is to choose which tip treatment we want. And here we can choose different kind of. So if I choose a flat one, we are going to see what is normally we should have. But now with this software, we can ask, let's say, uh, one exterior both. So it will show this one. But maybe it's likely that the wanted, simple wanted one will be the best. It's your choice. It needs 10 seconds to set up this. And everything is very uh, smooth. So now we are going to apply the export. And we go in, not in the export menu here, but in the analyze menu, in the trim surface. And the most important is the output. We want a step file and we want millimeters because I don't use imperial unit and we just send the export. So in Fusion 260 just going to upload the file. So that's what we get in Fusion 260, the left and right wing. And now normally you cannot make a, a, a mode right now because the intrado is so curvy that Fusion 360 don't know how to cut the wing in half. So you have to proceed manually. Let me show you the beauty of this. Just go to the surface menu and just in stitch. So we're gonna have to in stitch the right wing and we just need to delete the surface we don't want. Okay, so that's very easy. And of course, remember we have a neat separation between the extrado and the intrado. And that's really beautiful because you're gonna to uh, earn a lot of time. So you suppress this, this one, okay, all along. And now basically I stop here. Just you have to make a, a, a box here to make some flange and your mold for the intrado, if it is negative, is ready to go. For this wing, you will in-stitch and you will turn it upside down and remove all the parts on the intrado side to get the extrado and get a negative mold. So that's the usual stuff on Fusion 360. If you are a Fusion 360 geek and you think that the surfaces are not good enough um, because it's not blending enough, well, first of all, I would say in a mold with the polishing, you're not going to see any differences at the end. But if you are really a geek in Fusion 360 and you have high command, uh, you can slice all of this. You will use a loft and you will loft all the profile. And it's likely that you're gonna to keep this last part like it is. Because this one is very difficult to do, in my opinion, in Fusion 360. Now let's imagine that your friend Jack is coming along your wing you really like, but he wants to make some change. So you come to the file, and let's say that, first of all, let's say that he wants to change the thickness of the first profile at the root cord, and he wants to change this to 8% and half. So you just have to type 8 and half, and you can see that the root profile is thicker than before. Of course, it's so easy at this moment to change the profile anywhere on the cord. You want also to improve the root cord and you want this to be 260. And that's it. We don't need to move anything because the sweep is lo properly located at the inch lips. Now let's suppose that he wants to have the winglet's curvy effect 
we have here a perfect blended winglet of 60 degrees and you can see that the trailing gauge is perfectly symmetrical and you will have the separation, the right separation between the intradoor and extradoor and additionally uh, we have some, some twist effect because normally such winglets need some twist effect. Let's say I want to change uh, the location of the sweep because now it's quite rear. I want to, this to be a little more up front and you can see now the difference. You got the picture. So it's very simple if you know what to do uh, to uh, change some parameters. It's very fast. And what you have to do now is to re-export this in Fusion 360 and restart all the process, but that's usual Fusion 360 stuff. So let me tell you that this software is totally free. There is a forum, there is a really nice, very um, handy video professionally made. The software is regularly updated a few times few time a year and getting more and more functionality because of course I didn't tell you that there are some VLM vortex lattice method inside. Uh, you can uh, calculate some drag. There are some stuff that you will never find in uh, Fusion 360. And now in the last version, you can also, for example, you have directly the MAC, which is uh, called the reference, the average code references that will be very handy to calculate your gravity center because uh, with an elliptical form like this, it, it's quite uh, easy. So you need to understand that this tool uh, could also be a gateway for CFD, computational fluid dynamics solution, where you want to change parameters because you don't want to spend few hours on the CAD system. So you just change your parameter because this is totally insanely parametric. Uh, you change your parameters, you export this, uh, you put this in your uh, computational fluid dynamics. So it could be the fuselage also, and you can change parameters. 